a lot has happened since last we spoke. I filmed actually probably three turns or so since then, but I, I came into the habit of um, doing, doing my turns quickly uh, using the internet, so I was no longer updating the board, and when I fell, uh, a lot has happened since last we spoke. I, we were in a age of magic, and we went into chaos, and then we were iconoclastic, and then uh, we went into a golden age of theocracy, and then we went into the chaos, and then we were nihilists, and then something else happened. I maybe have spoken since during that time, I don't remember, I filmed a few times in there. Um, footage of some of that was used for the last video, which was sort of an encompassing of everything that our people has experienced since then, but not really. Um, it touched on certain matters that I think maybe I couldn't have spoken about, um, but it didn't keep touch on others that, that I probably could. So what happened? Well, we, we, were, we found ourselves able to speak. So once we were able to speak, we were able to talk to the Hobbit Lord, and he, he returned Pegasus to us. Uh, at least the elder of Pegasus and and stop taking from us and we we now live in peace with him we also uh, but but the Pegasus card is still missing and I'll get to that in a second we also um, made our peace with uh, with the funk master USR local Peter um, we we never really were in direct conflict with him but we've been we were able to make some trades um, we were, after all the chaoses we went through, we were down to just two cubes on the board. One in South America, uh, which was Cowboy, and the other one was Giraffe. And she finally reestablished Mound. Um, if you remember, Mound, I think, went into the sand. It's likely what happened, yes. And so she, she went across to, to reestablish Mound for two reasons. One, because that's what she needed to do. She, you know, and what we needed to do. We needed to have that kind of home base after all the sweeping away. We lost Pegasus, we lost our mother, we lost so much and we just traveled and we were without a home. Mound was the the firmest place we could we could refind um, with the people we had. Uh, but the other reason I did it is we did it is because it was right by the possessive man and we wanted to see uh, how he would behave. We offered to we offered to speak with him but he didn't he turned down our um, ambassador, Little Red. Now, granted, Little Red didn't do the best job. He was very um, brief. He was like, hey, I'm here if you want to talk, but he didn't even answer, respond to that. Instead, he just came in and he took Mound from us. And so that left Cowboy alone in South America. Um, we were already at the point where we didn't really have, I mean, we didn't have a chance of winning. We kind of haven't had that for a while, in my estimation. Um, others have maybe clung to hope a little bit longer than me. Um, I feel like I, uh, certain games like this, I think, allows for a diff for rewards outside of the end victory. Because really, if you're not putting money on it, what does the end victory give you except a purpose? And so we needed a purpose. And, you know, living, living happily was kind of our purpose after we managed to be able to speak again, but that got taken from us. So what could our purpose be? Well, we, we're nihilists now in the Dark Age, and we still remain there. Uh, and so Cowboy, alone in South America, had a nice treaty going with the Funk Master, but still was alone in South America. Cowboy took off his hat and walked into the sea. Uh, he drowned, and so in this game you can't be eliminated, however, and so we became a slave, and we got to decide who to be uh, enslaved by, and who better than the possessive man. Uh, we figured if we were enslaved by the possessive man, we could act as a sort of resistance. Um, and I bring this box out, one, because of that, and two, there's another reason, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, we needed to be a resistance because the possessive man, he plays the game very well, but he doesn't play with humans. He plays with opponents. 
and this game is about being human. And I think that's actually very human, to treat other humans as not being human. But that's the way he treated and I, I can't, although maybe the game was designed with that intent, I don't, I don't fully think so because there is negotiation in this game and negotiation is impossible if you're, you're not with other humans. It's impossible if you're playing with robots, for example, um, unless the robots are programmed to, to negotiate by humans. Um, anyway, so we couldn't, we couldn't let him take, take the cup. Um, with that behavior when there were others who seemed to be more human and so we we made it our goal to be the resistance and today we've been freed um, actually last night the possessive man had a slip up and I feel bad for him that he, that this happened but because he's been he's been playing really hard and he's been doing a great job I think it, I think he's used to playing a two-player game um, in which case you would he would probably be winning, but it's a multiplayer game, and he's really squashed a lot of people, and so that's going to make a lot of people less than happy with, with him. And so um, when he made a mistake, the Funk Master pounced and uh, pretty much crushed him. Um, but back to the Resistance, I need to talk about that before I talk about our freedom. Um, I brought this game along when I went camping, and just in case you know you ran into a group of people and you wanted to play a game I think I've also brought Dixit another game that works with a lot of people um, I've never played my copy of the resistance but I did bring it along I remember and I guess I was last night I was thinking about it and I seem to remember something that may or may not have happened I do remember that I had the Pegasus card separate from the other cards and I don't know I put it away somewhere, and I might have put her in this box. So I'm going to check right now just to see if, if maybe she's returned to us. Um, we've done our resistance, and now it's time for... Uh, well, I'll tell you what it's time for next. Let's see, is she here? No, she's not. So maybe that wasn't what she wanted us to do. I thought I was going to open the box and find her card in here and that it was there all along. You know, it's about the size of a real people card. Here's Fat Matt. It would have fit in there. It's something I would have done is put it inside. I had a, I also brought along Innovation, but I've played that. I play Innovation probably more than I play any other game. Um, and it's definitely not in there. Um, she wouldn't have fit in this. Yeah, I don't know where she is. I don't know what other games I brought along. I thought I would have tucked her in a box. I seem to remember doing that, but she wasn't in there. So, now it looks like the game's about to be over. Um, what a beautiful new table. It's a gigantic new table. I have set up upon it. Um, Andy and Bess, lengthwise, kind of getting it back into my head before uh, the next edition of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Um, but super long. I can play all sorts of games that I couldn't play before. Days of Decision, Here I Stand, all can fit on this table. Um, very exciting. Um, and it's good to have that exciting news because this very well could be the last turn of the game. Probably our last turn. It might be the last turn. Oh, I still haven't really decided what I'm going to do. Um, kind of set it up so we're probably going to go into chaos and when, when I do or if we do go into chaos um, that's going to end the game uh, I'll probably I don't know if I'll explain everything that's been going on um, but it's time to do the die roll right now and so maybe I'll change the camera so you can see it game end question mark See what it is. This has been several months. Yeah, it's a three. Minus two is a one. We did a revolution. 
took the possessive man's card. We ended up as the possessive man and we wanted to grab the points we could get and we did and then the game's over. So about a week has passed, almost exactly, I think it's maybe a, a week and a few hours since the game ended. It didn't end when I said it did. Um, turns out I made an error and had an evening where we kind of wrapped up conversationally the game, um, but then found out I got something wrong. Very typical of the game, actually, that that happened. Um, it ended a turn later, and it actually was, in terms of game, like my final score, it was actually better for me that it did, because the two top players took each other down a little bit, and we ended up second place, which was better than I expected. We, we probably should have finished in third place um, a while ago. Partially because of what people ended, but that's really not the interesting thing. I think now is the time to kind of wrap up the whole span in as brief a way as possible. Um, the rain started. Uh, it didn't really rain all summer, and the rain has started uh, probably around the time when the game ended, actually. So this, the, the, the game kind of lasted through this very hot and dry period for this area. Um, so you can see what that has done to the mound. I think you can see it. It's, it's diminished. But it's the same amount of grass. It just got matted down by water. Um, so how did the arc go? Well, most of the game we were in era one. Uh, and most of the videos we were in era one. I wasn't, there was this curious rule that, to the game that I'm not used to uh, for Origins. It's not a rule I, I've played with, that you can't really talk to the others while you're in era one because the person doesn't have lightning so I find that very interesting, but it, it definitely changed the whole feel of it for me. Um, and probably was positive in some respect. I don't know if I would have made as many videos as I did if I had been able to talk to the other people, but I ended up talking in my cards, kind of like I do when I play Solitaire, which is most of the time that I play. Um, so then Era 2 happened, and it was this kind of period of uncertainty when I was just kind of finally interacting with these people who um, seemed like they had, they had, I, had kind of pushed me out, or I felt, I felt sort of pushed out. Not literally, but in, in terms of the game. And so there's this kind of period of uncertainty, which is what the bicameral age is supposed to be, I think. So that kind of worked. Um, and started to make the diplo diplomacy, diplomatic um, connections with the others. Was able to establish a diplomatic contact with both the Hobbit Lord and the Funk Master. Um, the Hobbit Lord was important. He was, he was one of, he was a big adversary taking Pegasus away, but I'm glad we were able to peacefully talk things out. Um, and then, you know, after that it was just kind of smooth sailing. I developed a, a subservient relationship with the Funk Master, um, who, who, one of the interesting things in the game to me actually, I'm kind of going off in, a, in another direction, is um, throughout I kind of had a different foe in succession. So it started off, Wolf was the big foe. Um, coming down with the disease. He didn't really do a lot to me, but he was the first one to do anything to me uh, in the game. And then it was, I think, Possessive Man, Jonathan Bolton, and then it was the Hobbit Lord, and then it was kind of the Funk Master for a while, while I was in Era 1, because he was the one who was giving away the advantages we had, the things that kept us safe, which was the metallurgy of him. He gave it away to everyone. Uh, which was a very odd way to play. It was kind of two opposite extremes. There was the Funk Master who was very giving, and that was, um, I think, to his detriment. Maybe, but maybe not. I mean, he ended up winning. Uh, and, and then there was the Possessive Man who didn't deal with anyone. He just took and he attacked. And he, he played the game, I thought, like a two-player game, um, which, if you know, I think is what he's used to playing the game as, with just one other person. And you would play very differently. But, you know, if you're playing with multiple people, you can't just attack everybody and you're going to get stomped down. And that's, that, that ended up being what happened with him. I think he might have got last place. So everyone had a great time. Um, a lot of different play styles. Wolf was very methodical. It had some bad luck. Um, see, yeah. Uh, 
ended up doing pretty well, though. I think uh, at the very end, I, uh, one of the things we did is we had a revolution. So we took on the possessive man psyche, and so then we attacked Wolf unnecessarily. Um, I don't know if that really affected him too much. Um, the Hobbit Lord very much you know into advancement and helping himself and kind of you know playing the game for points almost pulled it off but at the very end the funk master took him down uh funk master could have ended the game earlier but um he ended the game a little bit later after he uh, had done some damage to the hobbit lord and you know overall it was a great experience i'm going to be playing another one play by form i don't think i'm going to set it up um the players are all going to be going on to be playing uh, days of decision two which i'm very excited for i don't think for those of you who are big Chappie fans, that Chappie is going to be going forward. Um, and he just, you know, by the time he joined the group, there there wasn't any, um, there really wasn't a lot of interaction with him. And I realized Days of Position 2 is a seven player game, so it didn't make a lot of sense to throw him out. I was going to have an eight player game first, but I tried out the eight player game and it's not something I really want to do. Anyway, so we're just going to be going out to Days of Position 2. What else do you have for that? There's, I mean, there's so much that happens. Um, you kind of, if you really want to follow the full story, you would have to, um, you have to, you know, watch the videos and then also read the forums, and that wouldn't even give you a full story. It's very long. Um, I kind of gave you a good summation, I think. Uh, what else? Oh, the Battle Stations game kind of, kind of died around the time that the Origins game did, but then. Now it's kind of come back a little bit. We'll see what happens with that, whether the imagination of the people can live on, even though they've uh, descended into the unknown era five world of advertising and success. 